Without further ado, uh, I think it's time for Bill, you and me to sit down and let uh, Director Letitia Long address you. And, and, and again, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you very much, Ken. Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was a little overwhelming. Um, it, Ken, thank you very much. Uh, before I begin, I would like to add my congratulations to Dr. Brady. Um, very well done, very well deserved. And to all of the new SPIE fellows, congratulations. Um, very well deserved. I would also like to acknowledge the distinguished innovators and explorers who are here tonight. And that's probably every single one of you. Um, you really have propelled the revolutionary advances that have created the phenomenologies and technologies that enable NGA to fulfill our critical national security mission. We certainly can't do what we do without what you do every single day. And we very much appreciate the partnership. We very much appreciate the innovation and the expertise that you bring to our business space. I would also like to recognize Kevin Miners. Um, when Kevin first called and um, told me about the award and the recognition, I said, lifetime? Really? <laughs> I think I have a little bit more to give yet, a little more runway. And he said, no, 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 I mean, you, you're highly deserving. Um, Kevin's been a, a dear friend and colleague for many, many years, a fellow Hokie. I saw a couple of head nods when um, Ken mentioned Virginia Tech. Uh, unfortunately, Kevin's not able to be with, his, be with us here this evening, but I would like to acknowledge his new appointment. For those of you who don't know, he has just been announced as the next Assistant Director of National Intelligence for Acquisition Technology and Facilities, and he'll start that new position July 9th. And this is a big step for Kevin, leaving the Department of Defense, still working very closely with us, but a well-deserved uh, promotion for him. Um, I would also like to recognize Paul Lewis. And Paul, where are you sitting? Can't see with the, the lights. All the way in the back, Paul. Um, Paul is NGA's only SPIE fellow. He's been involved with this event for 12 years. He's served as co-chair of several of the DSS research conferences. And Paul, just thank you so much for your many years of dedicated service to NGA, to SPIE, and to our nation. And good luck tomorrow as you present your paper. Um, a Lifetime Achievement Award truly is a remarkable honor, and I will tell you I am humbled uh, to receive such an award from such a distinguished group. Um, you are, as I said, the scientists and the innovators. As many of you know, success as an executive in the federal government, or actually I guess I would say success anywhere, um, is not achieved alone. It is the result of a team effort. It is the result of community, of collaboration, and collective perseverance towards excellence. And I'd like to just recognize a few of the factors um, that I believe contribute to me standing up here tonight. And that's first and foremost my family. Despite our long hours, our career commitments, our TDYs, you know, travels around the world, um, family comes first. And I would like to recognize and thank my husband, John, um, for your love and support. I couldn't do what I do without you, honey. Thank you. And thank you for being here this evening. When I asked if he would come, he said, I might actually get to see you tonight. So <laughs> method, method to him actually being here. Um, it, yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, next, of course, is the hard work and dedication of the thousands and thousands of men and women that I've worked with and had the privilege to serve with over my career. Uh, every day, I will tell you, I rededicate my efforts to the women and men of NGA. They are doing just tremendous work as they support our many mission partners all around the world. 
And finally, the opportunities and guidance offered by strong role models and mentors who have challenged me to be the leader that they thought I could be, even when I wasn't so sure. I have, I have been very fortunate to serve with and be mentored by exceptional role models. And I will start with Ken Israel. I mean, Ken talked a little bit about leadership. A true leader is someone who can, I think within about a week of uh, me coming into my new job, and I did not work for him, he had me in the Pentagon on a Saturday writing his testimony for his upcoming hearing. And at the end of about a six hour Saturday afternoon, I looked at him and I said, how did you get me here? And it was because, Ken, you were leading Darrow at the time, the Defense Airborne Reconnaissance Office, and he had a vision. I mean, first of all, had a vision that we needed that office, um, had a vision of where we needed to take it, where airborne reconnaissance and what it could do for the Department of Defense, manned and unmanned, and no one was talking about unmanned at that time, and it was very exciting. And I was at the Defense Intelligence Agency at the time, and our relationship was budgetary. Um, and I, you taught me so much, Ken. Thank you. Um, you took a very young senior executive under your wings and, and taught me a lot. So it's extra special that you were the one to actually present this evening. Thank you. Um, a few other role models. Uh, the current director of national intelligence, Jim Clapper. I first met as he was the director of DIA, then Lieutenant General Jim Clapper. And we have worked together over the last 15 plus years. And he taught me what courage is. He taught me what speaking truth to power truly meant. And was just another um, exemplary leader who saw something in a young executive and uh, still today is a tremendous mentor of mine. And a third is Joan Dempsey. And um, Joan um, it, also at the time was at the Defense Intelligence Agency and then moved to be uh, the Chief of Staff for George Tenet when he was the Director of Central Intelligence and she recruited me to come run the Community Management Staff, which, you know, it, for many in this room, um, it doesn't mean anything, those words, community management staff. It was then the staff that orchestrated policy planning um, budget requirements for the intelligence community. Now we have a director of national intelligence who does that. And Joan um, was one of the few women role models that I had the fortune, the good fortune to work with and be able to look up to and uh, continues to give me great advice today. So uh, those are three and just a handful of um, folks that um, have really done a tremendous amount to help me along the way. And one of, I believe, our biggest responsibilities as leaders and while I'm grateful that others saw that potential in me, I'm always looking for that potential in others and trying to develop those who will come after us. Now, um, unlike so many of you, I am not a renowned scientist. I am not an academic. I'm not an industry leader. Uh, as an engineer, as an intelligence professional, and as an agency director, I very much appreciate your accomplishments. I very much appreciate the accomplishments, particularly in our business area. So the remote sensing phenomenologies, the optics, and the photonics. Your contributions to national security, directly or indirectly. And I know that our partnerships will become even more important in the years to come. As budgets decline, um, it's a natural way for us to work even closer together. And um, we very much appreciate that the society here values and pursues the close partnerships with industry, with academia, with the military and defense and intelligence communities. So thank you. I mean, it is a tremendous opportunity for us to be able to take advantage of what you do. 
I mean, your members and you have been an essential force multiplier for our research and development programs. And most notably, I would say, for our academic research program. And this is where we bring um, professors from academia into NGA, uh, you know, working on our hard problems right in our spaces. If they have clearances and are cle with our cleared projects, if not, um, we may send uh, research projects uh, to the universities. And it's working through many venues like this conference that our R&D directorate, um, InnoVision, has successfully identified and supported many of your research initiatives that in turn have benefited us. Our workforce has the privilege, and I, I, I chose that word specifically, the privilege of collaborating with you, world-class scientists and engineers, to understand and solve our critical issues. You not only educate our next generation of scientists and engineers, but provide continuing education through conferences like these that keep our workforce up to date. And you provide uh, just a tremendous environment that allows us to connect. And we were talking at our table here at dinner tonight that, you know, what is the business proposition of a, of a conference such as this? And it, it's that ability to connect, you know, industry to show what they are doing, um, their latest and greatest, academia to present papers, our research entities within the, the department and the intelligence community to present their latest thoughts, and then the bringing together of all of this, um, uh, um, you know, just um, the, the word I'm looking for, just the, the gray matter, the, the, the bringing together of all of the smart people to exchange ideas is um, just tremendous. And so it's a partnership that has been and will continue to be vital to our success. And a, a couple of examples. Um, one is the visualization of geospatial intelligence data. Um, we are visual learners. And so to be able to visualize large amounts of data is extremely important to us. It's how we discover um, those unknown unknowns, if you will, how we get at some of our hard problems that we need to solve. And we are working with a number of partners at the national laboratories like Oak Ridge and Lawrence Livermore and Sandia, as well as many industry partners. And it's through these activities where we combine the national research labs as well as industry um, that we get the innovation of the many entrepreneurs. And we've got a couple of visualization approaches that look like we're going to be able to put them to good use and then marrying them up with something that we are very focused on today called activity-based intelligence or ABI. For us, it's a critical, an emerging but very critical methodology that applies advanced analytic techniques to big data. And so when we think about identifying patterns and trends, um, relationships that are hidden within large data collections, and we're talking data from anywhere. It can be geospatial intelligence, um, information, so it can be full motion video, it can be wide area, regular definition, high definition, uh, multispectral imagery, infrared imagery, all the kinds of things that, that you all work on. Um, but other types of intelligence and information data also, signals intelligence, human intelligence, human geography information, putting all of that information together and then trying to make sense of it, again, to discover those unknown unknowns. We're very good at looking at that which we know. We're pretty good at searching for what we think is out there, um, which then can lead to new discoveries. What we, what we are really trying to push towards are the unknown unknowns, the things that we haven't even thought of. And that's where the activity-based intelligence, when you can look at activity between very disparate types of information and something arises out of what might seem like noise. And so the ability to take big data and find big value from it and putting that visualization um, the visualization models on the front end, if you will, um, which enables those trends to emerge. 
Another uh, operational example, um, I mentioned wide area imagery, is using that motion imagery to process, capture, and store object identification data. So we seek to partner with industry, uh, and we are actually doing this right now, developing several models that would allow us to geo-reference all of the data that we collect persistently over a long period of time. And so it's a model that will allow analysts to identify and evaluate data down to the smallest object or entity. And we're working with other folks within the intelligence community because this is not only um, this is not unique to geospatial intelligence. If you want to describe an object, you want to use all types of information that you can, but you want to make sure you're all describing the same object. We're also working uh, very closely with John Hopkins University on this particular um, issue, and it's to um, define this unified object model. And so as you take these examples of visualization, visualization and activity-based intelligence. There are um, only two of many dozens and dozens of um, new types of approaches and techniques that we are working towards and working on to solve some of our most critical issues. And they are um, of interest to many of you here today. I've, I've used a, a couple of acronyms and talked a little bit about our business, and not all of you may know uh, who we are and what we do. So NGA, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, we're a combat support agency in the Department of Defense, and we're also a national intelligence agency within the intelligence community. Uh, we have statutory responsibilities to support the Department of Defense, so the senior decision makers, the war fighters, uh, the policy makers throughout uh, the cabinet, and first responders. Um, increasingly, uh, we work with first responders, and that's a little unique for an entity within the intelligence community. But when we are requested by a lead federal agency, we can use all of our great capabilities uh, to support whether it's a natural disaster here in the United States or abroad, uh, to support a national security event such as the inauguration uh, or a security event like the Olympics um, or the, the All-Star Game. And so uh, we also uh, support the, the rest of the intelligence community as we provide geospatial intelligence. The very nature of what we do makes us a critical partner because we provide that foundation upon which all other intelligence disciplines can be layered. And when I mentioned the activity-based intelligence, we are, while it's important to describe what is happening somewhere on the earth, you know, everything is somewhere at some point in time um, on the earth, could be in space, um, we're focused uh, on, on the Earth. But it's also to describe where it was, where it might be going, why it's there, what the context is. And so that's why the activity is so important. It's no longer just, you know, there's a tank, you know, at the 38th parallel. It's where was it, where is it going, and why is it there? What is the context? That's what the, the military commander needs. And so um, part of our mission set is to provide timely warning. It's to provide strategic intelligence. So we go from the indications and warning, what's happening right this minute, to the predictive and the anticipatory, which is where that going for the unknown unknowns is, is taking us to the predictive and anticipatory. We are also um, increasingly working in the cyber arena. And many might not um, necessarily put together cyber and geospatial intelligence. Well, we have our, our cyber operators who are very good at mapping what's going on in cyberspace. We then work with them to map that in the physical space. So we're taking the bits and bytes and connecting it to the bricks and mortar so that if a military commander needs to do some operational planning and they need to know where something is, that's where NGA enters in. 
We, I mentioned human geography information. We are also increasingly using information from many open sources to add that context of how humans interrelate and interact with the earth. So adding the population data and the ethno-sectarian and the education and census and whatever information is out there that will help us understand again the context or what is happening at a particular point in time. And I mentioned the first responders. Uh, an example that I'd like to give you is a very recent one and that's the successful domestic use of an airborne remote sensor and that's um, ASPECT. ASPECT is the Airborne Spectral Photometric Environmental Collection Technology Program and it's a partnership between NGA and EPA. It's deployed more than 130 times over the last decade. It is our nation's only civilian aircraft, 24-7 airborne near real-time remote sensor for chemical, biological, radiological um, that has an imagery mapping capability. And two weeks ago with Paul Lewis, um, our, our NGA are here tonight, we deployed in less than one hour to West Texas to assist in the response to the fertilizer plant explosion. And the aircraft in its sensor suite was able to play a very vital role in assessing the damage and the danger. It flew three sorties or, or um, three flights using airborne sensors, uh, made dozens of data collection passes over and downwind of the disaster, and the data was able to show in a very um, short period of time that the amount of ammonia um, in the air up to a thousand feet from the site was very low. The levels were safe and no additional hazardous compounds were detected. The aircraft was also, or the sensors were also able to identify the number and extent of the fires and the hot spots remaining the day after the explosion and help to assess the need on where the firefighters needed to focus. And that's a lot of what we're doing with first responders, is vectoring them to the areas that they need to get to first so that they can save lives. It's about giving them decision space on where they need to be working for first. We also help disaster response managers limit the area, the scope, and the duration of their evacuation orders. So we didn't have to unnecessarily evacuate families and also um, where it was safe for the deployment of fire and law enforcement and rescue personnel. And that's just one of many, many examples um, where we've had a very successful partnership and it's you know EPA that, that runs that program now. We're still involved in upgrades to the sensor but um, you know again working with this community in just developing the sensors up front has resulted in many lives uh, being saved. One of the major challenges we face today, and I talked a little bit about this, is getting at the enormous amount of data from all of the many sensors that you uh, so ably develop for us, and that's turning that big data into big value. We download more spectral bands than ever before. We download it from more sources from ever before. And uh, again, in this era of declining budgets, and especially today in the budget uncertainty, we know the, the, the budgets are going down, but it's really the uncertainty. Um, we can't scale to really uh, compete with the digital production of the entire world. Now, big data is good and even bigger data is better, but we can't manually examine all of the data that we collect. So again, that's that big value from big data, um, conflating it to that which we really need to be working at. And we do that through our partnerships, our partnerships with folks like you here in the room, our partnerships across the intelligence community, the Department of Defense, uh, academia, um, and, and beyond. And it is really integrating um, that which all of us are doing between the networks and systems, levering, leveraging each other's sensors and phenomenologies that we really uh, are able to tackle our hard problems. 
And again, you, our SPIE partners, are really key to making this happen because you continue to develop the sensors of the future for us. You continue to help us with the integration of the information. You continue to help us with the automated tools um, and the tools that are preferably as close to the sensor data as possible. And by doing this, we are really getting to that activity-based intelligence. So at the end of the day, what that really enables is our analysts to be able to spend their time analyzing the information. So it gives them the ability to deliver up um, a better answer, uh, more knowledge and more information for that warfighter to have more time to plan, for that policymaker to have more time to consider options, for that first responder to have more time to save lives. It is about decision advantage, and it's really what NGA and the entire intelligence community is trying to deliver. And in order for us to do that, we continue to need your creativity, your insight, and your expertise. Um, the continued innovative phenomenologies that you are developing for locational spectral and spatio-temporal capabilities, which are so important to us, the automation tools for the big data, and the easy-to-use application tool sets and interfaces. Uh, the partnering is extremely important. It's how we do what we do. So thank you very much for all that you do and all that you bring to our decision space and to our business each and every day. Once again, I am extremely honored uh, to receive this prestigious award, and I really do receive it on behalf of all the men and women of NGA. Thank you so much. You just heard from the most impressive lady in the intelligence community, and it's a memorable night, and I think you'll remember it always, and I want to thank you for sharing your time and your wise words with us. Uh, a few short final comments and thank yous. I would be remiss if we didn't uh, especially identify the lady and her staff responsible for setting everything up tonight, and that's Miss Diane Klein. So, Diane, if you're here, how about a round of applause for her? A round of applause for the, the entire SPIE staff and the Defense Security and, and uh, Sensing staff. Thank you very much. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Phil Stahl and my uh, co-chairman, uh, Dr. Dave Whalen. Uh, I couldn't have done it without them. They were staunch supporters to me. They were like my crutches, my left and my right. I, I, you know, they got me through. So thank you, gentlemen, very much. Good. One thing that uh, you, you should leave with uh, in terms of your overall impression about uh, Letitia Long is she has made NGA a national asset. Uh, she's made NGA what I want to consider a national game changer in terms of dealing with a full spectrum of threats that this country has had to face in an unprecedented way. She lives and, and inspires her entire staff to know the earth, show the way, understand the world. So with that said, all I can say in terms of final words is please have an enjoyable evening, have a safe journey home. We look forward to seeing you next year, uh, and that's going to be between May 5 and May 9, 2014, and have a special good night and take care of each other. Good night.